Hi everyone, I'm Thomas Chang from Funtech Innovations and today we're going to be talking about Inex Studio. Inex Studio is a software that you use to unleash the full capabilities of Inex C830. Inex C830 is this incredibly beautiful camera that's 4K with three sensors which is 12 megapixel each so 36 megapixel total. Stitch them together to form a 4K panoramic view. This camera allows multiple facial tracking, which is unleashed by this software called Inex Studio. So simply come to the Inex Studio page by visiting our website and click on Inex Studio, and this is what you will see. You'll see that Inex Studio actually provides multiple intelligent facial detections and auto tracking. And what you do is you simply select Studio Camera within your favorite video conference software, and you will be able to show your audience the tailor-made video from the six different layout modes. Overview grid, manual, auto framing, grid, whiteboard, and speaker. As you can see, once you switch the mode, the output is gonna be different. And this is what your remote audience is gonna see on their computer. To get a software, simply go to our webpage and download the versions that suit your computer. So let's say I have a Windows, and when I download it, I'll get an Inex Studio for Windows zip file, simply unzip it and run the executions and we are going to see the setup process. Just go through with it, don't change anything, and it's actually very easy. It takes only a short amount of time for it to unpack all the files within the setup file and the installation will be complete. Simply let it run through the entire process and we can launch it at the end. So this is the Inex Studio as you launch. Make sure you have connected your C830 with your, into your computer. So if your C830 is out of date, the software is actually gonna tell you right away. Simply choose update now to update to the newest firmware. And Inex Studio is gonna download the newest update and update the firmware accordingly. Simply let it run through the entire process. It's gonna take a while When the update is complete, click on OK, and then you can turn on the software again. So this is what you see when you turn on the software for the first time. Uh, in the middle is the panoramic picture from the C830. On the top right, you get a camera preview, and there are many icons here which we can go through real quickly. The first thing I'd like to suggest you to do is actually make your preview window bigger. So once you move it down, you can actually see that it's a lot easier for you to look at yourself or your meeting room when you pull it down. And this is exactly what your remote audience is gonna see in a Zoom call, Teams call, Google Meet. So this is what they see if you choose the camera as the studio camera, which is the one that you're seeing right now. So hey, I have turned on the Zoom. All we need to do is when we select the camera, select the studio camera, turn it on, and this is exactly the same preview that you see inside the software. Let me show it to you. See, this is the preview, and this is what we see in Zoom. Exactly the same. Whatever you want your remote audience to see, simply choose that in the software, and that's what they will see. Okay, so let's look at the rest of the features. The first thing you'll notice is that there's an orange box on me. The moment the software is turned on, the AI is going to survey the entire room and to figure out where the people are. The moment that it detects a person, it's going to put an orange box on that person, and then that person will get a zoom in shot in the preview. And there is a button called on tracking on the right. When you press that, you will notice that the orange box becomes a blue box and actually it's flashy. It's flashy is because it's actually constantly refreshing and trying to redetect where my location is. So that's how it tracks. Now you can see that I can actually move anywhere within the panoramic shot on the top and you will always see me and track me accordingly. So it's like a virtual director, very smart knowing where the person is. I could be in anywhere in this meeting room, sitting in any locations of my favorite seat. I could be walking to the whiteboard and actually write on the whiteboard and talk to you at the same time. The software will just automatically track me and put me in the center of the close-up view. So that's what tracking does. And there is a major distinction between tracking and track once. In a scenario where there's a lot of people, people moving inside the meeting room or people that actually walk by the window, then we don't want to have on tracking because that could be interference. So what would be good to do is 
had everybody sit down inside that meeting room and track once to pin their initiate locations and start the meeting that way. And that way you have a focus view on the person without the interruption. Sometimes we want to create a focus view on a particular area. Simply just drag your mouse on the panoramic picture and you can create your own box. And you can actually move them anywhere you want it to be and that's what the remote audience is going to see. You can also change its size accordingly. And of course you can create more boxes and that's going to change the view accordingly. However, notice if you move the boxes together, if they are overlapping, they actually merges. And if you have created too many boxes that you wish to clean them all, you can actually hit control, clean them all up like that. And simply just go track once to get your own box back or manually create another box to focus on a particular area. And now, if you want to add tracking effect to each individual box, you simply right click and click on tracking and now you have created a track on a particular box. So now I've turned myself on tracking and guess what? Actually, I can move within the 180 degree panoramic picture while the whiteboard is always being focused on. So that is how you create your own box and alternate the tracking individuals. So let's talk about more buttons. If you look, there is a pen up, center, and pen down. And what they do is, when you pen up, you ask the camera to look up, look in the middle, and look down. And depending on your situations, depending on where you mount the camera, how far are you away from the camera, how much higher is the camera to you, you choose differently. In my case, I like to use down so that the camera can look at me and also some of the table. And here you'll see a wide dash rectangle which you can choose to drag up or down to change that view angle vertically in the preview. And now you might wonder why is there a big black box down in the preview? The reason why there's a big black box is because when we choose the view angle originally, we erase the orange box that was there. So all I need to do is turn it back on again by clicking track once. The AI is going to detect where I am and give me the orange box back again. And guess what? During the pandemic, everybody has to wear mask, right? So even with mask on, this is actually going to work. So I just turn on tracking and you'll see that there's a box on me like a guided missiles, even with the mask on. Let me turn that off. And now we are in the orange box. Notice that the orange box doesn't move as I go. It's actually going to give us that fixed view that we asked for because we don't want too much disturbance in some situations. Only the blue box will allow it to track us. So different situations, we choose different boxes to meet the different scenarios. So to showcase the full capability of the multiple AI facial tracking, I have brought along a beautiful person now, let's take a look at how it actually works with multiple person in the view. We are in the overview grid mode as one of the six display mode that we can choose. So now you see that while this is on tracking, it will actually track the person and give us the focus shot. Doesn't matter where we move or where she goes, that close up shot is always on her. And that's what the remote audience is gonna see. In the manual mode, we see this big yellow box that we can change its size and its positions. Wherever we move that yellow box to is actually going to be the preview for the remote audience. And now this is auto framing. Auto framing works best when you choose on tracking. This basically will ensure all the audience inside this room will get focused on in the middle. And then we have the grid mode. The grid mode is actually the overview mode without the overview. So this is the grid mode and you see that it actually focuses on the person. We get that focus shot, doesn't matter where we at in the meeting room. Then we have picture in picture. The yellow box is actually the main picture, so in this case it's actually on the whiteboard. And now there are two people and how do we determine who is going to be in the daughter picture? Then we can pick up our mouse and simply right click on the person that we want to give priority to and pin. So now you can see that I have now become pinned and I appear on the bottom right. If I want to switch it back to her, I simply just pin her and she can actually move and she will always get tracked and appear in the preview. Then we have the speaker mode. 
Here, actually, we have an overview down below, but we focus on one box, one person. So right now, it's actually focused on me. If I want to change that, I can actually pin the other person. Then she gets priority. Simple as that. So let's talk about pinning. Sometimes, when two people are sitting too close together, then the AI actually thinks it's better to give them just one box instead of two. Then you see that we became a merged picture together. However, if I insist that I want my own individual zoom-in shot, I can give myself a pin and I will always have a priority and a box of my own. See, it doesn't matter what we do. If we overlap, it doesn't actually merge the boxes together. So you can choose the pin feature to get priority to the participant in the meeting room. Okay, so we can talk about effect. If we want to change the brightness and some of that color, we can come here. So right now, it's default on standard. If we click on brightness plus one, then you'll see that everything just brights up. So depending on your environment, whether you need more light or not, you simply change that. And if you want to have more customized features, you can go to custom and then change each individuals accordingly. And of course, very importantly, you want to choose the flicker or the hertz that matches your current power line frequency. Okay, so that's it for the Inex Studio tutorial. And we will see you again next time.